The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Bookmap a Pro Trader webinar series here, uh, December 9th through the 13th. Uh, all week long, we're going to have professional traders. Uh, you guys have uh, received the, the email, I imagine, um, and uh, who's, uh, who's presenting all week here. Uh, we have a great lineup of traders the entire week here. So uh, today we have uh, Bennett Stein. Uh, Bennett has been trading multiple markets over six years, and he's been uh, exclusively looking at crypto here for three years. So uh, this is a crypto trader here in Bookmap, uh, and uh, it's going to be a, a great webinar here because uh, we haven't really covered a lot of the uh, crypto markets uh, in Bookmap. So uh, I'm really excited to have Bennett here. Um, uh, you know, he's uh, he's as as it says here, he's fascinated with the psychology of the masses, how it applies to the market. Uh, he has a lot of great videos on his YouTube channel, okay, and I'm going to give you a link to that in just a minute, uh, the Bitcoin Trading Challenge, uh, and uh, maintains a focus on alternative strategies uh, traders can profit from with various cryptocurrencies. And he's has just recently created an order flow training course exclusively uh, for Bitcoin futures in Bookmap. Okay, and uh, uh, he's going to go through some examples of that as well. So here's some information about Bookmap, uh, bookmap.com, our Twitter handle, and our email support at bookmap.com. I need to go through the risk disclaimer here. Uh, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. And, uh, and then here's uh, Bennett's uh, contact information, uh, his Twitter, his YouTube channel, uh, you have his website here, or I'm sorry, his email, his website, as well his, as his bookmap affiliate link here. Uh, and uh, we'll show this at the end here, the affiliate link uh, for the, uh, the special deals you can get through uh, through Bennett here uh, that aren't available on the bookmap.com website uh, since he is a, a bookmap affiliate. Okay, so uh, anyway, uh, well, let's just uh, kick it off here and let me give the presentation over to Bennett. Okay. Well, thank you for having me. There you go. All right. All right. So you guys can all see my screen now. Yeah. Can everyone see the screen? And and uh, audio is good too. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys, and welcome to order flow. So what I wanted to start you guys off with is right now we are looking at what Bitcoin did Eastern time from 8 a.m to 9.45 a.m. Now, I pulled up this, this specific order flow because something pretty big just happened. Price either went a lot up or a lot down. Now, what I, what I wanna ask you guys is just looking at this, of what you know of order flow, what, what do you think happened? And, and Bruce, you can, you can cut in as well to tell me really what kind of order flow do you see? And then after you guys discern whether you know this was bullish or bearish, I'm gonna show you guys what actually happened. All right. Uh, yeah. Anyone? Uh, anyone following? Uh, following it this morning? Um, and um, okay. Don't Tariq, look up the answer yet. <laughs> Tariq, you say uh, you say a fake out. Okay. A fake out. So, do you think a uh, bullish fake out, a bearish fake out? What do you think ultimately happened? Uh, let's see. Jeff says uh, bull fake out here. Bull fake out. So Jeff's saying that. Uh, trapping trapping buyers is that correct uh, let's see uh, stop stop uh, stop loss or stop hunt um, and uh, yeah a lot of stop hunt uh, flip okay. of the, flip of the book here uh, this is interesting as well I like it. okay so let me just slowly reveal some things that were going on here and as I slowly reveal them it's gonna become a little bit more clear of you know what actually happened to price so again, this is probably your last chance to discern whether price went up or down. Speak now or forever hold your peace. So what we have here, first of all, is an imbalance. What we see here is volume plus 20%. What that means is that there's been more market buying within this chart here than there's been market selling. Now what we see is what I like to categorize price moves up and price moves down are demand runs and supply runs. So here, when price is only going up, that's called a demand run. When price is only going down, that's called a supply run. Now, in order flow, what I like to look at is the amount of aggression the buyers have been using during demand runs and the amount of aggression the sellers have been using during supply runs. Now, what we see here is that the buyers 
are dominating over the sellers. We can see there's just significant more buying interest than selling interest. So that's the first half of the equation of what we're looking at to discern, you know, is price going to skyrocket up or skyrocket down in a stop loss hunt and then move down. Now, what we also saw happen is let's look at these order book walls. We see this wall has been present for quite some time and it gets partially filled here, placed a little bit lower, and it's beginning to get some pressure here. Typically in Bitcoin, in Bitcoin order flow, when you see constant pressure on order book walls, what that typically leads to is a price move that goes beyond that order book wall. Now what we also see are any kind of large spoof orders or short term limit orders got pulled. This guy got pulled and this guy got pulled. Now I'm gonna reveal to you guys what had actually happened. It may, may blow your mind, it may not, but here's what happened. Um, as it loads, price went crazy. A lot just happened on Bitcoin, but yeah, it, it may seem like I'm actually even pulling up a different chart. That this was this was so much. Look, anyone who had said stop loss hunt was partially right, but really this was bullish momentum. What had happened is we see all these stagnant order walls here. Now what that means is that these order walls were here for quite some time. They're not new supply, they're quite old supply. And this market buying actually overtook these offers here. And we get a price move that goes a lot, lot higher. Now price actually began to drop when we saw this fresh supply added here. And then we saw some market sellers coming in. And now what we see is, I'm gonna show you guys another screen just to test you guys for the second time. When you see this, does this look more bullish or more bearish? Do you think that A, price rose, B, price fell, or C, price stayed around the same in this range? What do you think, Bruce? I, I guess you're still pondering. But what I saw was – Sorry, I was, I was I, muted there. Um, uh, oh, no, no, it's fine. <laughs> it, 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 well, anyway, go ahead. Um, I, I don't, I don't want to interrupt you. Um, but we, something we saw something very similar on uh, on Friday. Uh, but uh, uh, yeah, the, the 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 move right up and the move right back down, uh, yeah. and then uh, yeah, basically looking for it to balance. Um, you know, likely somewhere here in the middle. But like, uh, it's definitely not uh, bullish that we're down below that area where it broke out from, right? So the, those buyers can feel the pressure. Uh, if uh, if the sellers can can ramp it up, but uh, anyway, the yeah, I would, I would agree with you. And ranging is just about what price had done for a little bit of time. We see price does go down on on this heavy supply, but price does go uh, a little bit higher here. Or actually, yeah, price. So price went a little bit higher here, back into the range, and then price fell. So really, this heavy supply is really taking effect, as you can see here. Now, do you see all the liquidity that was filled right down here? This has actually been a recent pattern on Bitcoin where we see heavy liquidity added to the book and then it gets filled. Now, really a question that I get asked a lot of the time is, when do we know that a lot of limit orders, AKA liquidity being added is gonna be bullish or bearish? You know, when you see this, most people would say, hey, that's pretty bullish. That's where something, that's where something comes in called action and reaction. Whenever you see liquidity added or liquidity pulled, you need to look at the reaction of market orders and the best bid and the best offer. Now, what I saw was we saw all of these limit orders added, but guys, what's the result? Really, really nothing. If you look back here, you can see that market buyers aren't really that aggressive. You can see that the sellers are still dominant. I'm not really seeing a ton of other bids being added closer to price. And it still looks like the sellers are in control. So really this bullish action of adding a lot of limit orders really had not much of a reaction. And if a bullish action doesn't have much of a bullish reaction, well then that to me is quite bearish. And what we saw was that price began to fall and it filled these bids. So this is what I'm always looking for because I first found like potentially many of you, I know some of you here are gonna be order flow gods, order flow masters. Some of you may be a little bit newer. Now, what I found is that order flow first seemed quite complex. It seemed like something that would take months for me to actually learn and years for me to master. So what I wanted to do was I first segregated two kinds of supply and demand. I looked at market order imbalances, which is what I began with, you know, looking at the market order delta, you can see in green and in red. That's one half of the supply demand equation. And then what I also looked at 
were limit orders and that part of the supply demand equation. Now, I'm going to tell you guys, when I began, I thought that whenever there were more bids than offers, that would be typically quite bullish. But I, I mean, like many of you may have found, there's a large degree of spoofing in the cryptocurrency market, and you can't always trust limit order imbalances. So that's why I developed a system for really looking at how price reacts to limit order pulls and limit order placements. And if you can actually be able to gauge both types of supply and demand, then you're going to be able to have a great grip on the overall supply and demand of the market. Now, what we see here, I'm going to go on a shorter time slice, and we are going to analyze live action. You, I, everyone, we don't know what's going to happen next. You know, maybe the Bitcoin whales do, but, but we sure don't. Now, what we see is we saw that heavy selling on this supply run. We see range, but look what happened actually within this range. This was quite telling. We actually see finally more market buying coming in here, right? You see all that? We see a good amount of market buying coming in here, and then we see this bid that's added close to price, and it's fully respected. And after that, price rises. Now, what we see here is I still see strong market buying. I do see some fresh supply coming in, meaning larger offers have just been placed. But we always want to look at the reaction that price has to those larger offers being placed. Let me zoom in even more. Let's go in the 15 minute time slice here. And it also looks like we have a large bid here that was added. So to me, well, I'm actually gonna first ask you guys. Again, the answer to this, only, only Bitcoin knows. But do you think that price is going to go sideways? Do you think it's gonna go up or do you think it's gonna go down? What do you think? Okay, let's see here. Uh... Let's see, Tariq could actually answer this question earlier. Uh, let's see, Lana thinks it's going up. Okay. Patrick, Lan uh, range, uh, a couple of, uh, a down here uh, and an up, a bounce off the 7430 uh, area. Or 7240 is the uh, target there, uh, Jeff is looking at. 7240? Uh, uh, I'm sorry, 70. I guess he. I guess he means seventy four forty. Yeah, I was gonna say seventy four twenty. Seventy four twenty. Sorry. Okay. Oh, because of the liquidity added here. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we must be saying. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Interesting. Well, what I'm personally seeing is, you know, my my first reaction was range, but what I'm seeing is I saw a large amount of supply added, and it does look like it's having an effect on price. And we also see that this large bid was just filled. So what could occur, what, what would make sense is, what if we had this strong demand run, this strong uptrend here, some pullback and then a continuation? You know, for that kind of system to occur, what I'd have to see is, I wanna look at the rate of change when price went up versus the rate of change when price went down. Now the rate of change when price is going down so far, you know, we don't know what happens in the future, but so far it's been pretty slow. Um, it's been just kind of sloping downward but you can see that the rate of change for the bulls has, has been a lot more steep. They were much more aggressive and happy to buy. And the sellers seem to be really struggling a little bit more. So that's why I'm thinking that a weak retracement, potentially somewhere around here, unless this gets a lot more steep, is probably gonna lead to a continued bullish action. How would this be bearish? You know, I would say this would be quite bearish if we see a lot of liquidity pulled from the bids. We see continued strong market selling. And most importantly, on any demand run back upward, so price goes down, on any price move back upward, you see just very little market buying. If we see price go up with a very weak market buying, then that's probably a sign that price will just continue going lower. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm, I'm fascinated to see what actually ends up happening here. And I'm hoping that I think it was Jeff who had said that the 7420 may become some good support. If he's right, then... Absolutely, kudos to you, Jeff, you know, very good read. Very, very good read. Uh, but this is a really important part of the time for a trend. And whenever you're looking at order flow, it's important to always look at how strong the pullback is. Because if it's a strong pullback, it may actually end up turning into a reversal. But if it's a weak pullback, it's probably just a pullback, a retracement. Now what I'm seeing here is some strength, some bullish strength, and we can see that this current delta is nearing, it's about $793,000. Let's see if we can get any more. 
Now, in the meantime, I am going to pull up some beautiful practice, practice examples that I had prepared. So put on your order flow thinking caps, and we're going to put this aside for about 10 minutes. We are going to come back to it. We are going to see if that this kind of move is going to lead to a higher move. You know, we will see. But let's go look at some practice examples, shall we? So the first thing that we're looking at here is an example from a long time ago. But what we see is some strong demand here. And then we see this supply here. Now, I want to ask you guys, anyone who in the audience right now, one simple question. A, do you think it would be a good idea to buy right here, to slide in a limit buy order here? B, do you think you should do absolutely nothing? Or C, do you think this is a time to sell? So I'm going to give you guys one minute to really gauge what this is. And maybe you're right, maybe you're not, but the chart will tell. Okay, we've got a... Let's see. Hard, hard to see the pointer, but uh, let's see uh, a cell, a couple of cells here. People uh, are saying sell. Okay. Yeah. Uh, do nothing. And uh, let's see. Wait for seventy-five twenty-five. Wait for seventy-five twenty-five. Interesting. And what do you think, Bruce? Um. I would be waiting actually for about seventy-five, eighteen. Okay, something Down like that. Maybe, maybe even a little, maybe even a little bit lower. Yeah, I would not buy up here, but I, I like it. It's, it's, it's definitely bullish, but I'd be looking for a pullback. Well, okay. So so far, I'm, I'm going to reveal the answer here. So this is your last chance to post in chat. But so far, no one really smashed it on the nose, got it completely right. But Bruce, you were close. This may shock you, but look at this. Beautiful time to have actually have bought. Um, price continued to rise. Now, how could we have actually discerned that? You know, what were the hints here that that could have actually happened? Well, let me just talk about two things and keep it simple. I'm seeing more dominant market buying than market selling. I think most of you can probably agree we see the same. I'm seeing more buying. Two, I'm seeing a lot of bids being added here. And just when these bids are added, it's actually having a pretty bullish effect on price. Again. If these bids were added and price was flat, that is not a good sign because any injection of large demand should have a subsequent demand move. And if it does, then that's bullish. And here, what do we see? These were added and price rose and price continued to rise. And what do we see? I want you guys to also see just the amount of spoofing that was occurring as price was rising. I'm going to be fully honest with you guys. I've said this before, but... If you do trade cryptocurrencies or you think about making the switch or looking into it, there is a heavy degree of spoofing in this market. Why? Well, it's unregulated. There's no penalty. There's no way that these exchanges are going to hunt the traders down who are using these spoofing and momentum ignition methods and actually punish them in any way. So you actually have free reign to do things like this. Whereas in other markets, maybe you'd be able to, but you may have to worry about the SEC or some other kind of regu regulatory committee. And the benefit of that, that's not the end of the story. The benefit is that you can actually use other traders' spoof plays to your advantage if you know how to read it well. Now, I'm going to use that as a segue into question two. All right, let's see here. So this is another pattern. It's a very, very short-term pattern of about trading for about 45 minutes here. Now, using what you had learned from the last one, I'm gonna give you guys 30 seconds with this one, just to discern whether this is bullish or bearish. You can't pick neither. This one, I'm just asking bullish or bearish here. What do you think? Uh, we got uh bunch of bullish, uh, one bearish. Okay. Uh, whoa, the, the, one, the one guy who wants to sell. Okay. Yeah. But uh, yeah, everyone else is uh, bullish here. Yeah. And let me just reveal one thing before we go on. The buyers look strong. Yeah. They, they do look quite strong throughout. But I want to show you guys a little hint, a little something that the sellers were doing that may be of interest. Look here. Where my cursor is, I don't know if you guys can, can you guys see my cursor? Like, it's it's kind of hard to see, but I, yeah, we can see it. Uh, it's uh, oh, over over in the left hand uh, side by the big red dot yeah. there. Yeah. So that big red dot, guys, was a large market sell. But I want you guys to see the lack of interest that these sellers had as price was moving lower. They lost interest. 
I would need to see continued strong sales for me to be confident that price will continue to fall. I'm not seeing that. That was part one. Part two, look here. We see a decently large sell, then the sells just stop. You know, this is really telling me that the bulls are in control. The bears are clearly not in control at this point in time. <laughs> and look at that. Yeah, if you had bought here, well then say hello to plus 1% on your equity. Or, you know, plus more if you're using leverage. So, good job. I think everyone got that. That one person who had said bearish, hopefully you wouldn't have shorted with all of your leverage because that would have been not the greatest decision in all decisions. All right, so this is an example that I probably actually want to lead with um, because it is a little bit more simple and straightforward. But I want to tell you guys the one other thing that was added here. This is known as the chart volume profile. Now it's telling me how much market buying, green, and how much market selling, red, is occurring throughout different prices in this chart. Now I want you guys to focus on two things, the bidding and the offering, you know, that's one, and then two, the CVP. What does that tell you and are you bullish or bearish? Sorry, Bennett, repeat that one again. Yeah, so what I'm saying is look at the CVP and look at the added bids and look, look at the offers and tell me, are you bullish or bearish at this current price of 8048? You know, if I said you have to buy here or you have to sell, what do you do? Uh, everyone's, everyone's bullish. Oh, man. When everyone's bullish, that's a sign that typically most are wrong. But in fact, good job. Great job, actually. This would have been a beautiful time to have bought. Let's go look at why. Well, what we see here, first of all, is complete respect of this bid cluster here. I, I, I call it a bid cluster because we see that there are multiple bids squeezed together right here. And let's go look at the reaction that price had. Once this bid cluster was added or really re refreshed with more liquidity after here, what did price do? Price is going up. It really isn't telling me that this is bearish in any way. What do, what do we see on the CVP is really a lot more buying than selling, especially at these prices up here. So demand is likely greater than supply. And in fact, demand was greater than supply. All right, guys, we are at the final hurdle here before I'm going to reveal what happened to price here. I don't even know what happened to the Bitcoin price, but you know that we will reveal that soon. Now, this is an example. Um, put on your, your order flow thinking caps because this one is the most difficult by far very much probably the, the most difficult. I'm gonna ask you guys the same question as usual. Um, would you rather buy at the 76.275 or sell at the 76.27.5? Really take a focus on market sells versus market buys. Okay, let's see. Um, let's see, a bearish, it's kind of both. Um, some selling, uh, maybe if sellers, uh, more sellers here than, than, than bulls. Uh, no, it's about equal. It's about half, half here. Uh, so Robert's uh, pointing out some of the spoofing up there as well. Oh yeah. Uh, and, um, by weaker, uh, in the selling in the second leg there. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's uh, kind of, kind of 50, 50 here. Okay, 50-50. Well, I'll tell, I'll tell you guys, there is an answer, and half of you are right, and the other half are, unfortunately, not correct. Well, let's first look at this move that preceded all of this fun ranging action that had occurred. What do we see? Well, look at all these bids that were added, and yeah, they do first have an effect on price. You know, price is rising, bids are added. This seems bullish. Awesome. Then things begin to change. We see bids added and really not much of an effect on price at all. And then really a super big time for spoofing was here. Look at all of these bids added. This is the most bidding that has been added at any time during this chart. I mean, besides this. You see all of this liquidity added here, but what does price do, guys? Look at this point right here. There is no one buying. When you see price flat, no one's buying and you see all of this demand added that is not a good sign for the buyers because anyone who was thinking about buying or anyone who believed that price would rise would have probably bought here or looked to add more to the best bid because they saw so much demand this would really be the time 
they'd probably be, oh my God, price is so bullish. But what are people doing? Nothing. And then we see this big sell. And the very second you see that large market sell, these all get pulled. So here we can see at this point in time, this is when you'd probably think about selling because th this is just incredibly bearish. Price falls, we see that. We see continued supply and look, these limit sellers are actually having a pretty strong effect on price. It's respected. Now we're here. This one's tough, but price actually fell. Um, so the half of you that said to sell would have actually sold at a pretty good price. The reason I pointed out this, this price right here was this would have been the best time on the pullback to have market sold, I mean to have limit sold. Now what we actually see is we see demand added here and price does follow the demand. However, the, once these bids are pulled, no one really is interested in market buying. Um, we see then offers are added, market sellers are interested, and they just dominate all over. We do see some pullback here. It's not the strongest pullback. It's not very weak, but it's really nothing you know, to, to write home about. And we're not even able to break the highs here. And price falls, as you can see here. Okay. Even though there was all this liquidity to the downside and not much liquidity to the upside, price moved toward liquidity. Why? Well, we don't really see much of a bullish reaction to a bunch of demand and price falls. All right, guys. So hopefully you guys got four out of four for that. If you got three out of four, you know, that's still profitable. And if you got two out of four, that's still profitable if you have good risk reward. If you got one out of four, you still have potential to be profitable with good risk reward. All right, let's go see what just happened. What is going on here? Let me go to the 30 minute time slice because we have left this for some time. So we left off um, right here and I had said, hey, so this looks like demand looks to be coming back in, price rose. Now we see some actually pretty large market sales coming in and we're seeing this type of ranging action that we had predicted before where we would expect that price would probably range. But guys, look at the size of these cells. Um, what does this tell you, Bruce? What do you think? Yeah, I mean, uh, sellers coming in, they're also, you know, heavily on the, uh, well, they're, they were heavily on the offer there, but uh, kind of equal now. Um, yeah, so I'd be looking for this to, to test lower. Uh, I liked uh, Jeff's uh, 7420 level, and uh, let's see if we can get more sellers and maybe even reach down to, you know, below the figure there at uh, 7400. There's a yeah, lot, lot of liquidity I, down I mean, there at 39, uh, 7330, uh, 7399. Yeah, and this is also round number of 7,400. It probably contains many sell stops right below 7,400 because we know that a lot of retail traders like to put their stop losses just below round numbers when they go long. And it's here that I really want to explain to you guys the differences between Bitcoin and ES and NQ and really different kinds of futures because the order flow to me is is different. I've looked at both. I am by no means a master of ES and of traditional futures, but with Bitcoin, part one, you will see a lot of spoofing in Bitcoin that you probably won't see in other markets. Two, what I've found is that it's actually easier to discern whether demand is greater than supply or whether supply is greater than demand on Bitcoin than it is to do so on other kinds of futures markets. And three, this may seem a little bit strange, but Bitcoin actually, Bitcoin on BitMEX, which is what you're looking at right now, actually does move a little bit slower than ES and NQ. What I mean by that is if you look at a chart right now of the ES futures, what you would actually see is constant movement up and down, constant movement up and down. But with Bitcoin, we actually see a lot more ranging. And we see a lot more flat price movement. The reason that is, is because this is important. The fee system for Bitcoin is quite different than most fee systems for other futures. What you, what you see is whenever you use a limit order, so let's say that I'm gonna put my limit order here, right? I have a bid right there. I will be paid a 0.025% rebate whenever this bid is filled. What that means is that if I'm trading a $10,000 uh, position, then I would get paid I would get paid $2.5. I'm like trying to do that math in my head. 0.025% of 10,000 would be $2.5. So for any limit order, you will be, you'll be given a rebate of 0.025. Now for any market order you use, you have to pay a fee of 0.075%. So really when you're trying to do this full time, if you want to scalp Bitcoin futures, 
you really have to find a way to use limit orders and not market orders. Because if you can use two limit orders during a trade, then you can actually receive two rebates. A 0.025% on the open and a 0.025% on the close. But if you use two market orders to enter and exit your position, you're actually be paying a total fee of 0.15%. Does that make sense, that fee structure, Bruce? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Um, well, you know, some of the other markets do do have this, like the maker-taker type type of thing, like a... Uh, uh, you know, you provide liquidity, you get you get uh, you know uh, rebates, uh, or if you take liquidity, you get kind of penalized for it. Um, but uh, yeah, it sounds like a, a much more pronounced here in the uh, uh, these digital currency markets, which is great. You know, it's just a lot more means a lot more liquidity. Yeah, a lot more people want to place these limit orders rather than potentially use market because yeah. if you want to scalp order flow. I can't really tell you that it's going to be profitable to do so with just using market orders because you'd have to have price move at least 0.15%, right, for you, for you to break even. But if you use limit orders, you could even use limit orders at the same exact price and make a profit. You'd make a profit of 0.05% on your trade size. I'm not saying to do that, but I'm just saying that that is how these markets are different. Now, this action, I'm so happy that this action is the way it is today instead of just a very boring market. This is actually a pretty interesting market today. Now, I want you guys to focus on if price does go up, really the amount of market buying that you see as price goes up, because that's really going to tell us whether a, any price move upward is a retracement and the sellers are in control or a full-on reversal. So let's actually take a zoom in. We are going to do uh, 15 minutes a little too zoomed in. This is me. I'm always like trying to get the right time slice. Okay, so let's go take a look at who's in control here. I really want to see price rise, and then I want to see if those market buys actually still remain large. So I want to hear from you guys. What do you guys think is likely going to happen? Do you think, A, price rises on weak demand then falls? B, price just falls? C, price skyrockets to the moon? You know, what do you, what do you think? A is retracement. B is just, yeah, price just drops. C is we go moon. So what what do you think in the chat is likely going to happen? To the moon. Oh my god. Okay. All all the crypto traders who who are joining the seminar now are all going to say moon. <laughs> <laughs> but as um you know, I'd have to say the the question that no one likes, why? You know, you can't just put true or false or yes or no on on a, on a question like this. You have to say the why. So if you think that we're going to moon, let me know your why. I think just uh, bullish behavior here. Um, you know, okay. like uh, uh, when we were zoomed out there, a little bit higher time frame. Like, uh, uh, Let's go higher time frame. Sure. Let's go to 60. Yeah. Well, just the bullish behavior you see there after like around 11.07 or so. Ranging the demand. Yeah. Yeah. I think... I think that's what some people are referring to here. Um, let's see, oh, the market buyers are coming in. If price does just skyrocket, then absolutely kudos to everyone who just says moon, even as a <laughs> meme. Like, good, good for you. Let's go take a look at actually how big was this guy. This was two point three million dollars worth of market buying in Delta. Again, what we're looking at here with these with these dots, guys. This is market buying minus market selling, or you know the absolute value of either. So when I hover over this, this means that in this uh, time zone, I mean not time zone, during this time and during this range of prices, we saw 2.3 2.3 million dollars more worth of market buying than market selling at that price point. So this should jumpstart something, but really the question is: Is this going to be a weak demand run where we're just like not much happens, or are we going to moon? No, oh, well. We're going to see. And if you guys want to know actually how to get these settings, because the default is not like this, you can right click. We're going to hit volume dot settings, and I have mine switched to volume delta. Now, what I also like to do, my volume bars haven't been configured yet, but I also like to do a volume delta for the bars too. Because I'm going to, I'm going to show you guys a little strategy that I use that I didn't really do I, I didn't really talk about it so much in my learning course, but I will show it to you guys. 
really looking at the size of the buying and the size of the selling by looking at these volume bars in the histogram. So here you can see, we look at this supply and we look at the selling, it's quite large. We look at this demand and guys, look, just not much buying here. If you look at the size of this, this histogram here, it's this is clearly larger than this. There was clearly more selling here than buying here. So what did price do? It continued to fall. Now, what we see here is just about the same level of selling that we see here, maybe a little bit less. But what we see here now is that there was more buying right here than there was selling anywhere here. So I'm thinking that these buys, I mean, we, we either go up and then we see less market buys, or we go up and we just see lots of market buys and we moon. Um, but this is gonna be really a telling time for whether price is going to likely fall or to drop. So at this point, I want to ask everyone here, um, any questions that you have about overall order flow, how cryptocurrency can be a bit different, uh, any questions that you may have about order flow, you know, the floor is yours to ask away. So, Okay, let's see. Um, yeah, I mean, they've been responding here. To, everyone's responding to your question. Um, is uh, Yeah, is this recorded? Yeah, Leo, it is recorded. Um, I, I will, uh, in fact, um, let me, I'll, oh, put, I'll put the, uh, yeah, here we go, here on the sell side. Let's oh, see if man. I can drop it now. We, man, that was $4.37 million worth of selling here. So what we actually saw was anyone who had said, A, weak demand run, you were right, my friend, because uh, this is looking like uh, we weekly go up and then we fall. Interesting. But still, I mean, sorry for interrupting you, Bruce. I just, uh, I get excited by bearish and bullish extreme market buying and extreme market selling oh no no worries at all um just um uh just answering the question here about the recording uh and uh yeah you know you guys it's on our youtube page um i'll put the link in here for you um and i'm going to put all of uh, bennett's uh, links in here as well um so um so that you guys have them uh and uh, we can go through all that but uh, uh hold on just a moment here leo and i'll get it Okay. Okay, guys. So I put it into the chat there. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Just a moment. Entire audience. There we go. Okay. There you go. So it's in the chat. So the recording uh, link is in there as well. It, you know, you won't see it there, uh, Leo, until another, and Andy, you had uh, inquired for it. Uh, you won't see it until another hour or so. You know, we need to let this parse and then, uh, uh, it will, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see it. Uh, we'll we'll upload it there. So, yeah, here we go. Four four seventy four hundred. Yeah. And whoever had said moon, unfortunately, uh, was was not correct here, as you can see. Set, setting you see setting moon. moon. Setting moon. What was that? They're they're looking for the moon setting. Never never mind. Dumb joke. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, what I see here is this demand. Did this demand get pulled? Because it, it looks to me that we saw all this demand of we have two hundred, we have uh, two hundred fifty nine thousand dollars there, five hundred twenty four thousand uh, dollars there, eight twelve. You know, we have a whole bid cluster, and that's all gone. Where are the bidders? They're just not here. You know, so this is not looking. This is not looking um, lovely. But what I will do is. Let us do a little fun exercise together. So imagine that we wanted to sell here. Just imagine. I want you guys to tell me a price that you think would be a good area to place a limit sell. Again, this is just for practice purposes. I'm not actually doing this. But do you think that – what do you think is a good price here in the very short term to put a limit sell? Okay. Just uh... – Waiting here. Um, a lot, a lot of questions are coming in for you as well, so we'll get to those. Uh, 74, 19, 20, 22, 17, somewhere around there. So uh, okay, yeah. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do an average of that, guys, and I'll do 20.5. That is a little bit higher, but the reason I like 20.5 is previous uh, support could become future resistance. So potentially 20.5. Now I want to let you, you before I answer all your questions. I want to talk about execution and really some strategies that, that we use um, with our trading. And this may be different than traditional futures. 
But what you can do is let's say that you have a trade size and you want to trade with $20,000 in your size, 20,000 contracts. You can split that up into two limit orders, both of 10,000 contracts, and then put a stop loss beyond that. But the benefit of that is let's say that I have one limit cell here, right? And then I put another limit cell, let's say at, uh, I put it at 15, you know? It's gonna, yeah, sweet. So I put another at 15. What this means is that let's say that just one gets filled, then price goes down. I'm still in profit, even though I'm only trading with 10,000 instead of 20,000. Let's say both get filled and then price goes down. Well, awesome, we have a full position size and we get to reap the rewards. Well, let's say that all t both get filled, but then it hits our stop loss. Well, we just move on. But the benefit of segregating your limit order sizes is that it can allow for more execution possibilities. And at this point, I would actually remove these limit cells. I don't think that I'd want to use these anymore. I would probably even run this kind of setup. Again, this is not financial advice in any way, but let's think about that original 7420.5 that we had thought. So imagine that we have two limit cells, one here, and then the other one, imagine, I don't know, this is, this is seeming kind of strong. So I don't wanna put my limit cell somewhere else now, but I will ask you guys, if we were to use two limit orders, where do you want that second one to be? You want it here or, or do you want it a little bit farther? Yeah, uh, 7430. 7430, oh, you guys want to go far away. 7428. Wanna... Really far away, oh, no one wants to sell here? Mm, yeah, uh, 7417. 7417, okay. I'll throw that guy there. Okay, so a, a type of thing that, I mean, but do we even think the price is going to reach here? Or is, is supply too large? You know, at this point in time, I would have these two limit sell orders, but I would also be flexible. And if I saw something happen that looked like price goes down to here and then goes very weakly upward, I'd be even inclined to potentially put one of my limit sell orders here so that maybe price fills us and then it just dumps. That could be a scenario or price fills us here and fills us here and here and our total position average is somewhere around here. But I really like putting uh, different limit cells at different prices, different limit buys at different prices, because you just get so many more opportunities to actually execute. Instead of just hoping that one limit order fills, you can use multiple. Now let's see if price does get to our 74.17 so that our, our um, imaginary uh, limit sell order of $10,000 fills. So yeah, uh, any questions that, that, you, that the chatters have? Uh, yeah, let me get to some of the questions here just a little earlier. Um, some people would like to see some more about spoofing. Oh, yeah. I mean, everyone wants to see more about spoofing. So, sure, um, I will entertain all of the spoofers here by let's zoom out and let's go look at just the overall spoofing that was occurring, all right? So let me click that to young, none and prepare for a bit of lag, guys but let's, let's go blast off into the journey of spoofing. So I'm zooming out to about a four hour time slice. So this is gonna show you four hours of order flow trading on XBT USD. Let's just look at where the very large limit sells and very large limit buys were added. It's a little bit difficult to see here, but the first one that I see is right here. You can see that what ended up happening is, I don't want you to focus on the yellow here, but on the orange. Because remember that orange is one of the larger order sizes. Red is the, is the highest, of course. Now, I see a large amount of that placed here. Price falls. This could be potential spoofing. How do we know this is spoofing? Well, what ended up happening is look at it was placed again, and price fell, and then it was pulled. This, to me, is potential spoofing and something that you can actually look out for. Now, your question may be, well, how do I profit off this? Well, what you can find is if you notice that the spoofers are done spoofing, on the offer and you believe that market buyers are regaining control then you can look for placing a bid or placing a limit buy somewhere in order to catch you know what it ended up happening because what we ended up actually seeing is these spoofers try to push price down just before price rose this was classic spoofing of potentially traders trying to get price to go lower to fill their bids so that they could ignite the momentum 
to go upward. And you can see that there as well. Okay, this is just too interesting. We, we have to zoom in on this. What we're looking at is the order flow that had occurred just before price had just risen a, a quite significant amount. So I'm just going to zoom in on what was going on here. What was going on in this area here um, before price before price rose? Yeah, we see a lot of limit sells here. A lot of limit sells here and just not many limit buys. But how would we have known that this is spoofing? How? Well, what we would have known is two things. First of all, market buyers are dominating over market sellers. Two, there's been no respect for these limit sell orders. Really, price is trying to get as close to them as possible. Price has one touch, two touch, three touches, a fourth touch here. It's just constantly budging up against that 72.29. And eventually, it fell. But that's really what you want to look out for. Whenever you see a price move that may be spoofing, look at the size of market buys and look at the size of market sells to really think who's in control here. Are they just spoofing to try to fill orders? Or are they actually putting these orders because they want price to just dump? Discern that by looking at the market order flows. OK? OK, good. So uh, looks like both of our orders would have filled here. Our imaginary orders at the 20.5 and at the 17, with an average size of about 19, by my math. So imagine we are short 74.19 uh, with a stop loss, let's say, you know, here. Okay, so other questions that anyone might have? Yeah, um, a few questions here about um, looking at the different columns uh, and getting deriving meaning from them. Uh, like you, okay. you have two COB columns there, uh, but uh, do you, you know, you talked about the CVP, but also do you look at, which is chart range volume profile, but you also look at the CQC, which is um, chart range quotes counter or chart range trades counter for the CTC. Oh man, all the acronyms. All right, let's let's bust out some of them. So let's go on. You know, I actually don't look at these as much. My favorite would probably be SVP, the session range volume profile. What that tells me is the overall market buying and market selling throughout the entire session that I have loaded up. Um, we can also look at the trades counter. And the difference between these two is this is going to show me how many contracts traded at each price. But this is going to show me how many trades were initiated at each price. Now, these get a little bit more complex, um, and I can show them, but uh, these are ones that I don't use as much. But uh, let me show this here. Oh, yeah. You can see that the numbers are just all, all over the place. Let me just do bars only just to keep this simple. So this is showing me of the quotes, of the limit buys, of the limit sells, really what's been added, as you can see here, and what's been pulled. So we can see that we had a large amount of bidded interest around here, right? And I can even do this just to just to show. We have a large amount of bidded interest around the 7410, meaning a lot of bids had been placed there before. And on the ask, also known as the offer, we actually had a lot of limit sellers on that 7410 as well. So it seems like that 7410 level had a ton of limit order activity. Now, what you can do with that information, of course, is up to you. But let me pull up the SVP just to show you guys what I typically use uh, for my own trading. Now, the reason I like to click bars only, guys, is bars and numbers can get kind of cluttery because of the size of just how much trading is, is done on, on BitMEX. But what I look for when I look at the SVP is two things. One, who's in control by looking at the overall picture of market buys versus market sell? Two, where can I find trapped buyers and where can I find trapped sellers? So to do that, if I see a large amount of market buying above price, well then what that tells me is that there are potentially trapped traders up here. If I see a large amount of market selling below price, then what that tells me is there's potentially a large amount of trapped shorts just below. So imagine the price goes up $30 and we see just all of these traders had shorted here. Well then what that tells me is that 7410 would likely become support because so many traders had shorted there if price went higher. So this kind of trap trader analysis can be really nice for locating areas of support and resistance. Okay, um, let's see. Uh, Ing Yu um, has has been asking the one about the the, the questions here on the uh, uh, trades counter, quotes counter, uh, I, and I'll just I think it might be better to refer you um, um, Ing Yu to uh, maybe the uh, platform uh, basics webinar or, uh, you know, I, we can go over that uh, outside of uh, uh, Bennett's webinar, I think. Okay. 
yeah, it might, might be easier um, because you're looking for something very specific. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Um, isn't it more reliable to watch on the higher time frames? Uh, Andrew is asking you. When you go on higher time frames and use a volume delta, what's going to end up happening is that some of the deltas are going to cluster together. But what I like to see is much more specific market buys and market sells during each supply and demand run. So unfortunately, I mean, not unfortunately, but uh, you're going to have to look at the macro and the micro. It's good to look at the big picture, look at a four hour analysis of all the order flow that occurred to see the overall spoofing, to really see the overall trend and momentum of the market. But it's very important that you look at individual movements of supply and demand. So if I do this and I zoom out and I say, you know, let's look at the market buys and the market sells, you're going to notice that some of them begin to cluster together, right? You guys see many less market buys and market sells than you would previously. Well, that's just the way that it's calculated. But what we do see here is the overall momentum and the overall move of the market. Because without a macro approach, I would have never known that price had momentum ignition, potential momentum ignition to the upside, and then a really strong down move right here that actually filled a lot of liquidity on market sells that were, what, is that $18.2 million of clustered sell around that area in Delta? You know, we have a large selling here. But then at this point, I could see all of the spoof orders that are here, but then I also want to zoom in on the micro. Now, what exactly I look for on the micro is who's in control again. And a really nice feature of Bookmap is this volume uh, percent to see who's more dominant, the sellers or the buyers. This is saying minus 31%, which is telling me that there's a large deal more selling than buying right now. So my answer is both. You got to look at both. Okay. Uh, great answer. Um, let's see here. Uh, when someone was talking here about ignition and defining ignition. Okay. Um, that's covered in my learning course where I talk about momentum ignition. Basically, momentum ignition is a process where HFTs, traders, really anyone who has the capital to do so, they're going to identify price points where there are many buy stops and where there are many sell stops. Now, with Bitcoin, there are also liquidations. So what that means is that there's certain price areas. Let me just show you guys something. So imagine that right here, I know for a fact as an HFT, there's a ton of buy stops. There are a ton of liquidations of shorts here. I know that if I can actually pressure the market to reach here, then the market's just going to skyrocket higher. And what can I do? Well, this is where momentum ignition comes in. I can spoof the market. And I could put many bids to try to get price to reach a certain zone of liquidity, liquidity in the sense of many stops and many liquidations. But once price reaches that, I know that it's going to just electrify upward and I can sell at much higher prices. Now, it's not just bidding that these guys do to try to get price to reach a certain price point. What they can also do is put a lot of bids and then start market buying, market buying, market buying, market buying, and then potentially stop market buying once the market takes over with a lot of buy stops, liquidations being triggered, then they can sell higher. And if you are, I, I don't want to say you, but HFTs that are large enough can run systems like this to just put in profit day in and day out in an unregulated market where you can use momentum ignition as much as you want. So that is what momentum ignition is. And the question you may have is, how do I look for it? Well, it's not the easiest thing to, to really discern when momentum ignition is occurring, but I can tell you that there is typically a process that, that does occur. Usually you're gonna see a lot of spoofing and a lot of buying or selling, a buying if price is going up, a lot of spoof bids and a lot of buying. You see price actually reach a certain point where it just skyrockets higher and then you see all of the bids pulled. Now it's that move when you see all of the bids pulled that you may know that that was likely momentum ignition. So to cap off really what I'm saying here, let's zoom out and go look at that momentum ignition that had occurred when price just skyrocketed very, very high. Uh, there were a few patterns that, that were occurring. Well, what we see is that we have a large amount of market buying. Let's go look at here and imagine what we could have actually done to have known to potentially have sold. You know, this would not have been easy, but it is potentially something. So what we see is we see just dominant market buys. And it's kind of hard to see, but do you guys see all of the best bid being very, very large? 
What we see here is that the best bid and that the bidding near price is quite large as price is going up. But these offers here are quite stagnant. And this is the exact kind of pattern that you're going to see with momentum ignition. A lot of bidding with momentum ignition to the upside. A lot of bidding near price, a lot of stagnant offers that aren't really moving much, dominant market buying. And then you may wonder, well, what happens at the end of this momentum ignition? Well, do you see all these spoof orders that are igniting price to go higher? Just clear momentum ignition, they're gone. Really, they just drop out of the picture here. They try to come back here, and then they're completely gone. And what we see is a complete bid offer flip in the book. The bids went from the spoofers, the aggressors, the ones who are trying to get price to go high. Then when price does this, the smart traders, the HFT sell, and then they put all the pressure on, all those spoof offers on, to try to get price to do this and fall. Okay, I'm trying to do it for dramatic effect, but it's not like time with my words, right? Um, and fall. Okay, <laughs> come on. Where did you, yep, and there you go. And there's the move that happened afterward. So I know that's a long answer, but it's a long answer because it had to be, because momentum ignition is not simple. It's something that HFTs don't want to be easy, don't want it to be easy for you to discern it. But you can, that just comes with a lot of practice and really the right information for how to look for it. All right, that's my answer for uh, good old momentum ignition there. Okay, um, so some some questions here about the contract itself. Um, let me sure. let me find it here. Yeah, just just a moment. Um, See, so uh, yeah. So what what is the price for the future um, uh, Bitcoin futures Bitcoin contract here? Uh, yeah. So I I don't know I don't know David if you're talking here about or you're asking about futures Bitcoin on the CME or if you're talking about like uh, Bitmex uh, here, uh, which is leveraged. Uh, so, I, I mean, can, yeah, yeah. if you can elaborate on, on this, Ben, that'd, sure. that'd be great. Sure. There are two types of futures that are available on BitMEX. You have traditional futures that expire, and we have perpetual futures contracts. Perpetual futures contracts will never expire. They're just used to trade a leveraged instrument. Now, each contract, meaning each time you see any number here, 1,000 or 2.57 million, those are contracts. Now, each contract is worth one U.S. dollar. So you could actually say 3,004 uh, contracts, or you could say 3,004 dollars, because they're, they're worth the same. Okay, but uh, so a dollar move is, is a dollar is a dollar here in, in Bitcoin. Well, we're talking about two different things. Um, that's the price of the, uh, a, a dollar move is a dollar move, yes, but I'm talking about size, really the volume. So when you see this say 129,000, that's $130,000, $231,000. Okay? Okay. Um, let's see. I think, uh, let's see here. What about the slippage? Okay, yeah, a question here about slippage uh, in okay. in some of these uh, cryptocurrencies. Um, slippage, yeah. So, well, slippage can be high when you're using a, a stop loss. But if, of course, if you use a limit order, you're, you're going to be transacting at that limit order price. So to really minimize slippage, one thing you can do is spread your liquidity. So if, instead of using one stop loss, this is not financial advice, of course, you could use two to three stop losses at different price points. If you do that, you may encounter less slippage if you're a larger volume trader, you know, with trading with at least $100,000 leveraged. Now, I will tell you guys, remember we had put those fake limit cells at 20.5? And at 17, okay, have to, these are going to come later. Remember we had put the 17 the 20.5 with that average price of sell of about 19? Look at that, guys. We're making money. Well, making imaginary money because that's where we would have put our limit sells that we all agreed on in the chat. And imagine that we buy right here um, because this is looking like, or maybe we don't buy. Or maybe I asked the chat. What do you guys think here? So we are all collectively in a position that was short from 74.19. What do you want to do here? Do you want to hold the short? I'm not saying that in, in any way like, oh, don't hold the short. But do you want to hold the short or do we want to just get out of it right now? What do you guys think? Uh, let's see. Hold. 
Hold the uh, short? Uh, some people are saying get out. Well, there are really a lot of different answers here. Um, get out of the short. Yeah, get out. A get out seems to be the most uh, the most here. Okay. Yeah. Well, so far it looks like those who had said get out um, pick the right option. The reason why you, you may be confused, whoa, whoa, guys, why did so much selling happen that we see this buying? Well, we actually tapped into the stop losses right below 7,400 that I was talking about. Price went below 7,400 and hit some stop losses and potentially some liquidations. And then from that, we saw that the seller interest was satiated. Really, anyone who wanted to sell has probably already done so. And now we see the buyers coming in. And we see some liquidity here, and we have to see whether this holds or not. Okay, looks like the sellers are coming in, but they're not that strong. Look at that, guys. The sellers are not that strong right now. Let's zoom in even more on this fun. Yeah, okay. Can the buyers come back in? Because that was not the best looking sell. It was only what? What was that? How much? Like only $361,000. It's not even that much of a sell. So if we had exited our short around here, I think that that would have been good. We would have locked in a little bit of profit and we, we would be reevaluating the market right here for potentially some other limit orders for us to place. Okay. Uh, I think that's about it, Bennett. Um, other questions in here? Uh, guys, you, there's some questions that, that you're asking about uh, which are much more based about the, uh, the platform itself of Bookmap. I'd be happy to answer those for you, uh, you know, later. Um, but uh, if you have any questions specifically here for Bennett, uh, then this is this is the chance. Okay, uh, I'm going to put into the chat again uh, all the different links, his contact information, et cetera, uh, the recording where it will be soon. Okay, so uh, you'll you'll get all that. Um, and uh, yeah, take a look in the chat. And let's see here, here's a question. And then uh, I think we'll wrap it up. We've been going for just a bit over an hour. So uh, this will be, I think, last question. Um, and then uh, I'll, I'll, we'll end on the slide here and I'll, I'll show you uh, uh, Bennett's uh, website, et cetera, okay? Um, let's see, Andrew uh, is asking, uh, difference he knows between order flow and BitMEX versus other ex exchanges like uh, Bitstamp or GDAX? Yeah. Very, 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 very different. First of all, GDAX got renamed to Coinbase Pro, and they are, Coinbase Pro is not leveraged. Coinbase Pro is currently not on margin for any retail traders. BitMEX is leveraged. So you're going to see much larger volume sizes on BitMEX because it's on leverage. I would also recommend, if you're going to look at one source of order flow, I'd recommend BitMEX, XBT, USD, Bitcoin. You can look at others, but I just think that this is probably the best way to look and potentially even trade. Um, you can trade this live on Bookmap you know, once you have that set up. There is a pretty big difference, but it's just one is futures, one is just spot. Okay. Okay, great. Um, okay. Well, uh, I think that's uh, that's it. We'll, we'll, we'll wrap it up here. Um, Let's see. Okay, okay, Renee, we'll we'll get to your question here. Topic on uh, liquidation. Can you give an example of one to a hundred where the liquidation price kicks in? One to a hundred where the liquidation price kicks in. Oh, do you mean leverage one to a hundred? I mean, think hey, so. You, I think that's what she's talking yeah. about. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I can answer that. So when you use a hundred times leverage, you will be liquidated with a half percent price move. Some people think, wouldn't it make more sense for a 1% price move? But that's actually your bankruptcy price. You will be liquidated, meaning you lose all your funds, on only a half percent price move. So if you believe that many traders are actually using 100x leverage, and let's say many of them are using, uh, are shorting with 100x leverage, then a half percent price move up is going to liquidate a lot of traders. Okay. All right, excellent. Um, all right, guys. Well, uh, let's see here. Um, uh, let me, uh, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll take the screen, Bennett, and I'll, I'll show the slide sure. here. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, so everyone, if you have any questions here, um, you can go to these areas and I'll put them back into the chat for you as well. Okay. So just a moment. There we go. 
All right. So uh, yeah. So uh, here's here's Bennett's uh, Twitter, uh, his um, his YouTube. Uh, you know, search for a Bitcoin Trading Challenge. Uh, you've got his his email here and his website as well. Okay. So uh, uh, a Bitcoin a Trading Practice dot com, and then he's uh, uh, referring you here to the guide and the order flow. Uh, uh, outsmart the market maker here. Okay. And if you're interested in Bookmap. Uh, he's uh, an, a Bookmap affiliate, so you can get special deals from Bennett uh, using this link here, uh, and uh, and that's pretty much everything. Oh, and then also the recording. So I have that in here as well. Uh, it's obviously not in there yet, guys. It'll give me an hour or maybe an hour and a half, and we'll have it up in the uh, on the playlist. Okay, um, uh, Bennett, thank you very much. Uh, fascinating stuff to see Bitcoin here and all the different uh, kind of nuances. Uh, in the cryptocurrencies, uh, working within Bookmap, a lot of guys uh, are, are just kind of getting uh, into it now, or, or are new to it. Uh, even though uh, you know we've had it in in in, uh, in Bookmap for for quite a while now, uh, but uh, it's uh, it's fantastic that uh, you are exclusively looking at it here in Bookmap. Thank you for having me. Okay, all right, thanks guys, uh, and uh, we will catch up uh, tomorrow, uh, same time, and uh, yep. Uh, I think uh, Jason Love is up tomorrow, uh, and then uh, guys, uh, you know, great, great traders throughout the throughout the rest of the week here as well. Um, thanks again, Bennett. All right, see you guys. Bye bye.